along the way have you had to find your own clients like when you were offering that free service was that of your own bat or uh, how did that sort of work with building your own client base or is that something that real fit give you clients and then you also find your own clients and is there a different financial gain if you find if you bring a client in before you were a full-time employee of course uh so in regards to the first part a little bit of both so obviously the business would get general inquiries um that would kind of be distributed through the different coaches but then mm -hmm. there was always kind of a little bit of an expectation of uh, at least doing something to try and bring in business because being a small business it's not like there's a huge marketing budget so it kind of takes and this is something that's kind of developed over time as well it kind of takes a combined effort to kind of get the name of business out there and bring in clients if you were to start again would you you know what would be your social media of choice would it be go for all of them and go for, and just chip away at it would it be get one down pat first and and build that to a point where it's rolling and then add a new one to it um, so I guess that aspect from it, we'll, we'll start with in terms of for someone that hasn't got that brand, uh, they've got no followers, where, where would you start? I reckon, yeah, I think wherever you feel comfortable. I, I don't think the platform matters too much, as long as it's like one of those bigger platforms. Uh, but I would say the most important thing is just starting and getting used to it. So wherever the first, wherever you feel comfortable starting, start out there and then go from there. Because it's obviously quite a daunting thing to do. Uh, so, and then in whatever medium you feel comfortable doing, if you feel comfortable writing, write. If you feel comfortable talking from a camera, talk. If you feel comfortable, more comfortable putting up pictures, but pictures, uh, whatever to get started. And then over time, you'll get better at it and you'll get more comfortable with it. And then it just kind of becomes normal. And then from there, you could branch out to other platforms. For those that you mentioned, uh, there'll be a moment where you're struggling with something and you thought, oh, this could be. You know, there must be some other coaches that are struggling with this too that will resonate. Do you just quickly write that down in your phone, you know, yeah. uh, or in a notepad or something and then post it? Or do you just, once you've thought of it, you get out the phone and post it there and then? Depends. So if I have time, maybe, but then or I just have notes. I do have a note section in my phone for it and I'll just jot little notes down and be like, oh, this is a good thing to talk about, all that sort of stuff. Another thing too that's probably underrated is reposting stuff. So. A lot of the time, if you don't have much time or anything like that, you go back a couple of months and just post something that you posted previously. Um, yeah, and just and repost, I think, is serious, sort of underrated because no one, you think about it, right? You probably went on social media this morning. How many things do you actually remember from, say, like, like that someone posted or from someone's story or something, or even from yesterday? Yeah. So, yes. like, no one's going to remember if you posted something two or three months ago and you repost it. And what about from an engagement point of view, like how have you sort of um, developed to, to make your content sort of stand out and and, and get that and gain that engagement? Because I guess once someone's got the consistency down pat and they've, they've valued social media now, but it's pretty competitive, uh, how do you sort of stand out from the rest and um, make sure that, you, like you said, you work with the algorithm of each social media platform and your stuff gets seen? It sounds corny, but I think... Just being yourself. That's how you add your spin to it. Uh, uh, because the thing, the other thing I'd say on this as well is, first of all, is I wouldn't get too caught up, particularly when you first start, I wouldn't get too caught up on the engagement. Um, my advice some would be start doing it and just commit to doing it once a week, twice a week, once a day, whatever you want to commit to, and just do it. Don't, don't worry about the engagement or anything to begin with. You can worry about that later. Once you get in the habit, because you're not going to be good at it at first. Same as anything. First time you do anything, first time you do a lift in the gym, you suck at it. What would be some key learnings that you sort of wish you knew when you started or you wish that your university sort of built awareness around or educated you on uh, when you're starting out of business? Well, it could be a, um, it could be a long list. Uh, I had absolutely no idea when I first started um, about anything, to be honest. Uh, I... My advice for this would actually be, if you are going to start, start by working for someone else, if you can. So come in, work for someone else, um, and try and learn from them. So if you come in as an employee, you don't have to worry about that extra stuff to begin with. You can 
come in, kind of start coaching, figure it out as you go. It might mean you get paid a little bit less than your parents who would working for yourself or by yourself or whatever, but it's worth it because you get to come in, build up your coaching skills, you can learn about this business stuff on the side, 